To my knowledge, Phyllis Ewins had only two great preoccupations in her long life. Walking and moths. An interest in these same two subjects also grew within me after a number of years of knowing her. Such was the power of her influence. Moth Lane follows a character called Thomas, who uh, is a lepidopterist, someone who studies moths um, from the north. And he's a sort of shadow version of uh, myself. He meets uh, a character called Phyllis Ewins, Dr. Phyllis Ewins, uh, and her sister Billy, uh, who were uh, in themselves real people who I met, though they, they weren't lepidopterists or the characters in the in the story, Thomas begins to have a very strange um, visions of his own past intermingled with this much older woman uh, who he slowly becomes uh, obsessed by. I was unsure whether she was referring to the photo or, in fact, the very trace of the memory. Her sister had tried to meet her halfway, walking with her despite her great discomfort. I wondered how long the trip had lasted, what the pair had discussed on the long meanders up the many Snowdonian hills and mountainsides, if they had walked at all, that is. I inherited a box of photographs from an elderly lady that my grandmother had looked after uh, when I was living uh, on Merseyside. And uh, within this box of just tons and tons of interesting photographs, there, there was something quite unnerving and eerie about, especially the images from the 1970s. Uh, but generally, there was a sort of hysteric atmosphere about them. You know, the book was written at a time when I'd just left Merseyside properly for the first time. I'd lived on uh, the Wirral for you know, 20 or so years, and, I, and then I'd lived in Toxteth for several before I moved down to South London. And the book is um, was written during that, that divide. And even though I was relatively happy in South London, um, there was a need almost to keep the connection uh, with the Wirral in particular. Um, and and this, this book is about the, that divide in some regards because the characters sort of ghost each other. Uh, variously, you know, one heads to North Wales and then one heads to London, and then one heads to London and the other's going back to North Wales and vice versa until, until, what, until, until you know, death visits them, basically. This is the road where Billy and Phyllis really lived and is when I first actually met them. Uh, my grandfather used to deliver their pet food uh, and that was how all of my family actually met the, the original sisters. The doorway is completely different now and in the book and in the photographs the light comes through. Uh, the doorway in a really particular way now it's just a, a plastic door but the road is essentially the same. The house was like walking into a time warp in that everything had sort of frozen in the 1970s even in the early 2000s which is when I met her and yeah it's strange being back. <laughs> I remember when the real Phil died and her house took on such an atmosphere that uh, I, I went and, and filmed some of it because it felt very, um, there, were, there were no real words to describe it, you know, death changes places as much as it changes people. I sometimes thought that I could hear these moths in their casings 
attempting to flutter their wings while still impaled to the boards by their pins. I would lie awake at night in the bed, considering the sound. I hope overall that moth light stays with people in the way that the genuine characters uh, in my life have stayed with me, you know. I quite like it to be a sharing of the haunting, if you like. <laughs>